How's everyone doing? Who's here? Oops. It's funny, I'm like expecting you guys to respond. Like, it feels so quiet when I go live. Flyby is here, Frozen Dragon. Frozen Dragon. Brian, EG, you love the thumbnail, I can't take credit. Am I allowed to steal those pictures? I don't know, but I like using them for my thumbnails right now. Hello, Fatal Framer. Good morning, Akos. Ah, no, I, I'm not pronouncing it right. That's my homework. I'm gonna look up your name and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the like Google pronunciation and I'm gonna practice for hours on end. Maddie, hi. Matthew, I'm good. I'm good. I've been so sick. So sick. And maybe you can kind of hear it in my voice, but I kind of like when I have like sick voice. <laughs> It's like this little, you know, you know, sick voice. I kind of like it. Um, but yeah, I've been really, really sick. And I, I got this cold. Why are colds different? Like, why do they have different symptoms? I don't understand this. Someone needs to explain this to me. Why do they have different symptoms? Because if our, if like most of the symptoms are a result of our bodies trying to protect us, like, oh, let's get this stuff out by like having a runny nose, then why are certain colds like runny nose type colds and others are like fever type colds? This cold, I've never had this before. This was a sneeze cold. This was like, I was sneezing nonstop. I've never had that. Who sneezes? Like, that's not, that's not a thing. I was sneezing, sneezing, sneezing. And anyway, and like my nose was super sore, but I'm much better now. It's minus 24 in Alaska. You like my sick voice? I just, I like it. I was like, I should record a song like this. You know, I can't like really sing. That's, that's like one of the sad things is usually my day to day. I'm just like wandering the house singing and I can't really sing when I'm sick. Bacterial infections can be different from viral effects. Say more. Tell me more. What's the difference? Thank you. I am doing better now. My mom was very sweet this morning. She came into my room too early and woke me up and was like, I'm going to go get you a baguette and a coffee. And she's been sick too. Um, anyway, it was like, it was very, and I think the reason actually for her, the outing for her was so she could go to the drugstore and get more drugs because we've both been taking Advil, cold, and sinus nonstop. You will study the infections. Okay, you get back to me. You tell me. You tell me. Please explain this to me because I can't do a Google search. Someone else has to do my research for me. I know. She's, she's so sweet. And then she had some lessons to give today because she's a music teacher. And so she taught one lesson and then she really wasn't feeling well. Like really wasn't feeling well. <laughs> and um, and she was like, you should, <laughs> she's like, my mother, what a bitch. <laughs> like she was just kind of complaining. <laughs> and, and we both laughed about how on her tombstone we were right. <laughs> Joanne Grant, what a bitch. That's the kind of morning it was. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird when, like, you get to such a good place with your mom that you can laugh about her being bitchy. I love that. Oh, you intend to be a light for others. That's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll just be the boss. I'll tell you to do things every week. I'll give you homework. 
<laughs> just like random research projects. Things I'm just curious about. Whatever, yeah. If you also want to look up the whole Amelia Earhart thing. Um, did they find her? Have you guys heard about this? That they may have found Amelia Earhart? They may have found her. And the reason I think this is weird, I only discovered this. Like, they think they found the plane. So they say. But then there's other people who are like, no, they didn't find her. That's what it seems like on the internet anyway. Um, the reason I find it interesting is because, really, I'm serious. At one point, I was, I don't know why, this, you know, flitting thoughts. I was thinking about doing a one-woman show where I played Amelia Earhart. I don't know why I was thinking of this. It was like, I don't know why I was thinking of this. It's like, what if I did a one-woman show? And I was like, what kind of character would I want to play? I'd want to play someone who's like inspiring and trepidatious and adventurous. And, and I was like, Amelia Earhart. And then I thought, no, they'd never cast me as Amelia Earhart. And I was like, well, if I cast, I don't know. This was like a whole thing. I don't know anything about Amelia Earhart. And this was like maybe a few months ago. So I just find it interesting that then this thing about Amelia Earhart came up. You know? Happy Gilmore. The Happy Gilmore thing, the fact that I should watch this has become such a thing that I almost like, I don't want to watch it now because then it'll stop being a thing. She has been, I don't, it's kind of disappointing though if like we find her. It's like, there's no more mystery then though, right? It's like no longer a thing. Now she's just, like what she's famous for actually is not being found. So if they find her, it's like, well, I guess she was just some lady that died in the ocean. That's really sad and disappointing. I mean, I know she's not just that, but like the average person just knows that it's this like pilot who couldn't be found. <sighs> Grab, wait, who? Wait, Chubbs actor, who's Chubbs? I may lose some brain cells. Mm. But I need them. I need my brain cells. A one woman show. I don't know why I feel like one woman shows. One, one woman shows are kind of cringy. Like I think I've just seen too many uh, bad representations in TV shows when it's like, oh no, oh no, we have to sit through this. Like, you know, in La La Land, when she puts on this, like, one woman, <laughs> this is just like a me thing. I love La La Land. Um, but for me, I'm like, what is this one woman show that Mia puts on about her aunt living in Paris? Like, it can't be that good, right? Like, it's not even something that happened to her. It's something that happened to her aunt. I don't know. What's the story there? She just lived in Paris? What's the story? I'm confused. I just don't, I suspect it wasn't that good a show. That's what I kind of think. Plus, it's her first show. Like, what are the chances it's actually good? You know, and Sebastian is like, it's amazing. But he's like being a supportive boyfriend. What if it's not that good? <laughs> I think that's really funny if it was, if it was bad. Adam Sandler. I don't know Adam Sandler. Maybe he's a nice person. Maybe he's not. I don't know. I, ha I think I had like an audition once in the same building that he was doing some voiceover or something. Maybe I was doing dubbing, I don't know. But I remember being in a hallway 
and hearing in another room Adam Sandler like very loudly <laughs> being Adam Sandler it was really really loud um and they were like yeah he's working on a project or whatever so that is the sum total of my understanding of Adam Sandler is he's really loud he really knows how to project Okay, well, I hope you guys are great. Chris investigates, Chris investigates. Ooh, I like that name. I like that name. Okay, um, I'm gonna start getting to today's topic. Uh, that's your podcast name? You have a podcast? Is it called Chris? It's called that, right? You just said that. That's what you wrote. <laughs> What's it about? It sounds very meta. Should I listen? Okay, I'll watch it. But then it won't be a thing anymore. Then you have to tell me what else to watch. Paranormal. Oh, uh, I'm going to look you up. Hi, E.G. E.G.G. There's an E.G. and there's an E.G.G. Hi, how are you? Where are you? Who are you? Or no, you're not E.G.G. You're egg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have egg and we have banana. I love this. Durable than Billy Madison. I've seen Billy Madison. Hi, Lord Ali. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hi. Banana. I really like your name. Really, I love bananas. A world without bananas is not a world I want to live in. I want to hear the big news. Okay, I'll get to today's topic, but egg, I want to hear the big news. It is egg, right? Or is it EGG? I don't know. It's a mystery. Don't tell me. <clears throat> I want to hear the big news. Hi. Okay, maybe it's not, <laughs> maybe it's not appropriate. Okay, time for the topic. Um, hmm. Firstly, I'm gonna preface this by saying, I know this sounds super cringe, like be a light for others. Be a light. <laughs> Share your light with the world. And a past self would be like, that's really lame. That's, that's, that's really lame. But I kind of think, I don't know, what's really lame is actually really true. And if you can like let go of being cool, there's this whole other side to life. If you let go of being cool, oh my goodness, there's so much more out there on the other side. And it's kind of fitting that this is today's topic because just naturally, I feel so much more open in the world lately, kind of since the new year, but it just keeps, it's like I'm just opening, opening up. Um, and I just like feel myself in conversations with other people, just like able to listen more and able to take them in and like, yes, able to be more positive, but it's not coming from a like, I have to do this, I should do this kind of thing. It's like, I have the option of doing this. I have like the choice to do this. I can like put more energy, put more like interest, put more love and kindness. And it's just like, oh, I didn't even like see that I actually had all these like really cool <laughs> things that I could put forth in my interactions with others. And I, um, and it feels good. It feels good to do that. 
So to give you guys a bit of a backstory, like I was a very good listener as a child. Um, and I probably really took pride in that, in that like I was this person who like, I wasn't gonna judge you. I wasn't going to interrupt you. No, 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 never interrupt you. I wasn't going to be mean to you or harsh with you. I was gonna be, I was just gonna listen. And I was gonna be this like kind, kind person but I always resented it <laughs> like I felt like it was this identity that was put on me because I mean pay attention to the good listeners in your life because often how a person becomes a good listener is like if they're not that comfortable speaking so you're like okay I'm not the one who's going to be like taking the spotlight. I'm not the one who's going to be um, sharing or, or talking or showing off or any of that. So you get, so what else is there? You get really good at listening. You get really good at observing. You get really good at like watching others and being sensitive to others. And that's like needed. That's appreciative. Um, appreciated. But for me, anyway, I can only speak to me. It was, it wasn't a choice. It wasn't something that I really wanted to be my personality. It was this like, this winning formula, this thing that I knew other people liked and enjoyed. And it also seemed to fit in with my view that like, I shouldn't take up space. I shouldn't take the spotlight. I should let other people shine. I should let other people feel supported. I should let other people feel good about themselves. I should let other people, you know, be able to get things off their chest and be able to express themselves and maybe like, you know, just like feel their feelings and tell their stories and all of that. So it made me feel good in one sense that I was able to give that for other people. But at the same time, like it made me feel like I was compromising myself because I wasn't really being who I wanted to be. And I felt like like I felt, I was doing all of it, but I felt like other people were forcing me into this position that I didn't choose for myself, into this role that, and this identity and this like listener, quiet, old soul, like girl who, who was, who was there for other people. And kind of like a tangent of this, I guess, because I got good at listening and I got good at like helping other people feel okay in the world. Like I also was someone who like very much saw other people as like being in need, like they were struggling. I was very, very concerned with other people's state and other people's suffering and other people's like problems and their discomfort and their, their issues, you know, and I really wanted to fix them we talked about like whatever a little bit talking about my mom my mom is someone who like most of my life I I was trying to fix I was really really concerned for her and I was really trying to fix her because I thought she was she wasn't okay and I didn't I didn't see that this was like I didn't see the selfish component of this and kind of the the blind um blindsided component of this which was like i was very much seeing that through my own eyes like that i wasn't okay i couldn't be okay until she was okay so she has to be okay like i wasn't taking ownership for myself and so i was constantly kind of like on her criticizing her in a way in my own way for not being who I thought she should be, for not being all like fixed and shiny, for not letting go of the things that I thought she should let go of, um, for not being happy, you know? It's like, how am I supposed to be happy until you're happy? Um, and like relationships like this, they kind of create this vicious circle where it does feel good to have someone's attention and someone's support in that way but it's also like the person helping helping I was helping but like you know what I mean 
the person helping, you feel like their need to help. And so you're like, okay, I have to let this person help me constantly. <laughs> And you kind of resent them and then the person helping is like I have to constantly help this person and you resent them for needing for constantly needing to be helped and it just goes on and on and on and on and on it's really funny it's like really really <laughs> it, yeah if, if there is a God he must like really enjoy watching this these dyna dynamics play out all of our little dynamics play out anyway so <laughs> so what I have found is that the way to actually help someone really 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 you have to like be actually able to see them for who they are and if you have all this gunk and this garbage in the way it's like it's like you're like this you know, and this is a really good analogy for, you know, talking about like, oh, I'm such a good listener, but it was very comfortable to be such a good listener because I didn't have to expose myself in any way. Other people could just like share everything and I, I could just like <clears throat> take it and I didn't have to put anything out there and I, and I got praise for that. So, so I got to hide. I got to be back here hiding. But again, I'm hiding. So anytime you hide, like, you're obscuring your own vision, too. You know what I mean? So I'm back here hiding. And then through these little peepholes, <laughs> I'm able to see the other person. And maybe I'm like this a little bit, too. And so I can only hear them to the extent that I'm not covering myself up. And then from this, like, <laughs> obscured sightline and obscured hearing I get whatever I get that I'm that's able to pass through and then I help from that I help from that position and I'm I'm a light I'm I'm a positive like I'm this and I give of myself and my advice and my opinions from this from this okay and it doesn't it doesn't work it just ends in a lot of resentment and a lot of frustration as opposed to like I just don't think you can actually do anything until you're free to not do it as opposed to if I was like okay you know what <sighs> I don't need to hide I don't need to hide I don't need to be something that I'm not I don't I don't need to like be this listener personality I can speak and I cannot speak I'm completely free in this situation. The more that I get free, the more that I just get free, 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 and I don't need to be anything, therefore I can just be everything and nothing. Like, the more it's just like there's no imposition on me, the more I can actually take someone in. And then they can actually like be seen and they can actually see me and we can actually have a conversation. And from that place, like, what you often discover is just, like, nothing really needs to be fixed. Like, <laughs> like, we can laugh about, like, my mom complaining a ton and being bitchy. Because we know it's just, like, it's not that big a deal. And I'm not triggered, like, mom's unhappy. Oh, no, the world is caving in. It's just, mom's unhappy. She has a headache. She needs to go lie down. There's nothing wrong. But if I were to come at it from like, <gasps> like my my little like triggered, oh no, like she's not okay, therefore I'm not okay. And I'm so dependent on that. Then it can't pass by. It can't move. And so this whole idea of being a, being a light in the world what is that? First of all, like, do you actually think you're a light? Like, okay, we're all energy. I still struggle with that sometimes. Again, just because I'm like really attached to being cool and I'm like, that sounds really woo woo and mm, we're all energy. Mm. And I know, like, from a scientific perspective, we are that, but, mm, but okay, we're all energy. 
you are all light. Do you actually think you're light? Do you actually think that? That like that's your nature, like that you're light, that you're this little ball of light, that that's actually who you are. You're this little ball of light energy, you're this little ball of light. And so you don't really get a choice. You don't get a choice but to be a light in the world. And you don't really get a choice but to interact with other people because we're very social, like human beings are social creatures. We can't survive without someone else. So guess what? You're a light for others. You just are. That's just who you are. You're a light and you shine light for others. So do you believe that? Okay. From that place, what would prevent you from being that light? What would stop that? Again, if you start putting up shields, you start noticing things that maybe you don't like inside yourself, within yourself, about yourself. Oh, I don't like that feeling. I don't like, I don't want people to see that. I need to do something with that. I need to fix that. I need to, and you start covering yourself up. You start protecting yourself. You start defending yourself. And you think you're doing it for like the good of all. You think you're doing it for yourself, for the good of yourself. Really, really, you really do think this is the right thing to do. You really do think that this is the right thing to do for other people. Like I really did think it was the right thing for me to do for other people that I don't, that I don't share, that I don't speak up. I really like, yeah, that I don't speak up, that I don't like set boundaries or I don't like express my opinions, that I don't take up space. I really thought that was for the good of all. I was doing a good thing. So I'm gonna put up these walls. I'm gonna protect and I'm gonna shut myself down. I'm gonna shut these parts down. And the other parts that like I don't like about myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna like work on those. I'm gonna like and be doing this while other people are talking. But then you're just obscuring. You're obscuring what's actually there. And your light gets dimmer and dimmer. Of course it does. How could it not? How could it not? And then everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing this. And so we're like these little balls of light that are just like bumping into each other. And we're like, why is it so dark on planet Earth? Why is it so dark here? Because we're all, because we're all like trying to not, uh, not let this light out. Because we think there's something wrong with it. And then maybe uh, we don't like how it goes. We don't like how it spreads. We don't. We just want to control it because we think we have to. When you're a kid, like little babies, it's so obvious that they're this like that they're pure love. You know that's something people say like babies are just pure love. They're just first of all they're like the neediest creatures in the world. Okay, they're needy, but they're not like. Oh, don't look at me. I'm so needy. <laughs> I'm a baby. I want you to feed me, but I also don't want you to feed me because you don't like it when, when that happens. Like, no, they're just like, feed me. Um, <laughs> but from that place, because they're like so open about their needs and they're so open about who they are, you know, they take. Yes, they absolutely take. But from that place of just like not needing to be ashamed of that, not needing to cover up that taking, they give so much. They're these little balls of love. They're love, they're light, they're light. And then, you know, they get older and they start looking at the adults in their life. And adults are kind of like, oh, you should enjoy your childhood. You should enjoy this while it lasts because it won't. You'll start being an adult and you'll start understanding that being an adult is about responsibility. It's about doing what doesn't feel good. It's about compromise. Yeah, life gets hard. Life starts to wear you down. You get disappointed. You get heartbroken. You know, you go through things and it wears on you and it tears you down. 
they're painting like this really depressing image about what it means to like to to just like be a human being and, and get older not and they're telling this to you from like that place of you know they're not necessarily seeing things clearly they're seeing things as they are seeing things from their understanding of their own lives but isn't it possible that as you get older as you get bigger like more expansive more of yourself you discover more right like you're you're constantly taking things in, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning. That we shouldn't, that life shouldn't like shrink as we get older. It should expand, it should grow. We should get brighter as we see more, as we know more. Our heart should get bigger, not smaller. But we don't have that, like most of us don't have that as a role model growing up we don't understand that like that that's even possible we think no I'm supposed to shove these things down but you don't anything that comes up anything that like you don't like like life is constantly offering these things that it's like oh god that's coming at me and that's coming at me and that's coming at me and if we try to shove it away right we're like we're dampening that light anytime we try to like control and we try to shove away we're putting up a little wall we're putting up walls 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 but as these things come at you like there's a possibility that like okay that thing is coming at me and this is like an opportunity for me to like let it kind of like wash over me and I get to learn I get to like be bigger because of it not smaller the less I resist Unless I just like resist and put up walls and try to control it, the bigger I get to be and the brighter I get to be. And that, I mean, I'm saying this, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's there. It's possible. And I think ultimately like it's what everyone discovers to the extent that they discover it. That the more you can accept the world and the more you can accept yourself, it's actually like the bigger you get to be. And when you get to be really big, the thing about being really big is it's really powerful. Like it's it's not what you think. <laughs> Meaning you're like, no, 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 no. I need to protect myself because, because that thing is coming at me. But what you don't understand is if you can let it like pass through you and you can get bigger because of it, you don't need to protect yourself because you're big enough to handle it now. Every time you let yourself be bigger than the thing, bigger because of the thing, you're more powerful, you're more able to handle it. You're bright enough for it. And then the more that you like, the brighter you are and the more that other people respond to that, you know, and love you for that and love you for like all the light that you give them. Again, like the more the more power you get, the more freedom you get. And it just goes on and on and on and on. It's this vicious cycle, but there's positive vicious cycles where like the more free you get, the more free you get to be. And the more free you are, the more you can handle everything. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And people respond to that and they like it and they love it and they reinforce that. And you go, okay, I get to be this. And I get to even be this. And I get to even be this. And I get to even express this and even share this and even know this. And even, be, like, it just goes on and on. And then they see that in you. And you're not doing it to, like, help them, fix them. They see that you're just there with them in that way as yourself. Not doing it because you think anything's wrong. It's such a difference when you're like with others and you're like helping others, being there for others, but not from a place of anything's wrong, just from a place of like, because you can be, because you're big enough for it, because it just makes sense to you, whatever you're saying. It just is there for you to say that and speak that and be that. And you don't see anything being wrong with it. It is such a relief to have someone like that 
in your life. I know that for me, like, the biggest relief, the biggest, like, moments of relief I have gotten were when I shared, like, a thing that I thought was so terrible, so terrible, and to the other person it was nothing. I was like, okay. So? <laughs> It was nothing, it like passed through them. It passed through them. And because I got to witness that, like it was like, oh, this thing is not the end of me. It's not the end of that person, therefore it's not the end of me. If that person isn't triggered by this, maybe it's not triggering. And I got to release it a little bit. It got lighter. Because it was lighter for them, it was lighter for me. And it got lighter. And that just keeps, it just keeps going from there. You start letting go and letting go and letting go and letting go and you start seeing how the things that were so heavy for you actually, they're not heavy, they're just things that happened. They're not anything, they're just things that happened and it's not happening now. And if it's not happening now and like you're still here, then it actually is okay, it's survivable. It's okay. If it happened, it's okay that it happened. If it happened, it's okay that it happened. How can it not be? If you are the way you are, Whatever you are, it's okay that you're the way you are. It's okay. How can it not be? At some point you have to ask yourself, what do I care more about? Do I care more about feeling good about feeling relief, about feeling peace, about feeling happy. Do I actually want that for myself? Like, really ask yourself this. Do I actually want to feel okay? Or do I want to keep protecting myself? What matters more? And sometimes you're not there where it matters more that you feel good. Sometimes you're not there. You're like, no, actually, it matters more that all these, all these, like, circumstances line up. That's, that's what I need more than to feel okay and to, like, just drop these walls. It's some, no, I need these things more than I need to feel good. Okay? I can't say, like, what it's going to take for you to want the other thing, to just like want selfishly to feel better. But eventually you get there. And often it's just like, it's just like one little piece that you decide, I just don't have the energy to keep this one up anymore. And you drop that. And nothing happens. Or maybe something good happens, but the world doesn't end. And you go, oh, Oh no, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't need that. Okay, well that was a waste, but I can't change that. And then you start taking another down, you start taking another down. It just slowly demolishes itself because it's not natural that it stays that way. It's just too much effort. Eventually we get too tired. Eventually it becomes too tiring to stay miserable. It just gets gets too tight it's too much it's just you can't do it forever it takes a lot of energy to stay miserable it becomes more cringy to be miserable than to be happy I'm writing this thing and it's interesting because like as I write it I feel myself I'm writing a book but as I write it, I feel myself getting lighter and lighter and lighter. But I'm still trying to like stay true to the character. It was like not, 
in the best position, <laughs> but I'm finding it harder and harder to access that like the, the stream of consciousness that's like so negative and so like self-abasing. I'm finding it harder and harder to access that because it's just like, why? Why would I do that to myself? Why would I think these are like, it's just, it starts to feel gross. It starts to feel like, why am I drinking this sewer water? Why am I doing this? And why, why do I continue to think that this is like for the, for my good and for everyone else's good? Why? I just, I don't have the energy to listen to those thoughts anymore. I don't have the energy to repeat those thoughts anymore. It just stops making sense and it doesn't make sense. So how do you be a light for others? You are a light for others. You realize that. I mean, maybe you don't realize it, but, but like play with the idea that like that's actually who you are. You exist with other people and you're light. Therefore, you are light for others and you're light for yourself too. You're light, you're light. And so start asking yourself like, where am I backing off? Where am I covering? Where am I protecting? Like if I'm not the brightest thing in the room, why? I can't be the brightest thing in the room if I'm still protecting myself. So am I willing to look, let my guard down around something? And you let those pieces go and people respond. They really do. They really do. And it reinforces something in you. You go, oh, that, this thing that I've been trying to not show is actually something that someone else seems to like. And it actually feels really good to let that part show. Feels really good to stop resisting this. It actually feels way, way, way better to stop resisting this. And the people around you will change because of this work. And then you get to play with them. Because the more that you show, like, I don't need to resist this about you, the more that they can put their guard down and then they start feeding you, you know? And it just goes back and forth. And suddenly you have so much more energy and the people in your life have so much more energy and it just goes on and on and on and on. And like, it's really simple and really beautiful. And it never stops. I don't think it stops. You just keep going. It's so good now. How much better can it get? And it gets better. It does. We should be happier. We should be so much more happy at the end of our lives than we are at the beginning. It's not this like, scary reverse triangle that some people have tried to tell you it is oh yeah enjoy your childhood now that doesn't last no it's the opposite you get bigger you get brighter as you go through life okay how's everyone doing does anyone have any questions about that? Hi, Zane. Thank you. Mm. Just swell. I love swell. What? Did something just run behind me? Where am I from? I'm from Canada. Nice to meet you too, Zane. Mm, thanks, Maddie. What's my favorite food? Chocolate. What's the secret of my appearance? Um, I 
just look this way. I'm a big believer that like your outside is, there's a theory that like your physical body is actually your subconscious mind is like the manifestation of your subconscious mind. And, um, and even like your facial features, I know there's genetics, I know that this, I know that, but like your facial features in some way are like represent, absolutely representative of like whatever is inside. And there's also, you know, like storing tension in places in different parts of the body. I actually think it's like really worthwhile taking in someone's physical appearance to get an idea of what's going on inside. Yeah, the fakeness is just, again, it's it's so much effort to be fake. I, and I really think it's effort, it's effortful, effortful, efforting to like not be in your heart. It's draining, it's really hard. It's, it's a really hard, it's a much harder life actually I think it comes much more naturally to us to be kind and generous and loving um but but we think we need to be something else in order to survive thank you fake people have more friends maybe I don't know that. But if you're fake, like they don't even really know you. So you don't actually have actual friends. And again, I just think that starts to like, it goes away eventually. You can only keep a mask up for so long. It's, it's too tiring. It's not worth it. Like also, that's what I mean about they're not real friends. Like the rewards from that are not worth it. It just becomes this thing that you have to keep up. Be a Batman. I almost wore Why are you guys talking about Batman? Wait. I almost wore my Batman shirt. A cold Martin Doyle. Doyle. I love that last name. Hi. Vishal. Hi. United Kingdom, we're in the UK. Bateman, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, <laughs> you use friends, cool. That's amazing then, I guess you're, you're killing it at life. Raul, hello. Really? Doyle. I wonder what it means. Martin Doyle, like that's such a British name. I like Martins too. Like I've never met a Martin I didn't like. Come on. Ugh, what a name. So good. It's midnight. It's a midnight. It's much easier to hate. I don't think so. It hurts. It's coming from hurt and it hurts. It hurts. But it's it's like, it's a manifestation of like, <clears throat> re resistance basically, of like not liking your situation, not liking, not liking. It's, it's effortful to not like. I don't like this. Because you have to do something. If things are coming at you and you're like, I don't like this. You have to do, you have to protect yourself. You have to do something about it. And so you literally have to like put up your fists in a way. As opposed to doing nothing. Doing nothing. There's nothing you actually have to do. Like, yes, we have to live and we have to like. But there isn't this like inner resistance that we actually have to do.
are you <laughs> like, am I Vaseline because I'm real Mr. Jerry's okay okay <laughs> Thanks, Abdul. That was very, very funny. Okay, we got it. We got it. All right. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about? One Tin, one tin Soldier. I think I know that song. But I don't know it well enough to sing it just off the top of my head. Uh, but maybe sometime. Love your hair. Thank you. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This, this is getting weird. <laughs> what is my favorite color? Uh, indigo. Barbie girl. Okay. I like turquoise. Tur oh, yeah. I love turquoise. You're so ugly. Samantha. You're not ugly. I don't know what you look like, but I know you're not ugly. It's not possible. Hard to forgive. <sighs> That's okay. Sometimes if you don't, if things seem hard, you know, it's good just like having the thought like, what if I could? Like don't try to force yourself to do anything. It's nice to just be like, what if I could? What if it was possible? And don't, don't try to make it happen just let that, let that idea kind of linger. What if I could? What if I could? What if it's possible? What if there was a way? Just let like, suspend your disbelief for a second. Suspend the like it being hard, forgiveness being hard. What if it wasn't? Don't try to make it happen though. Oh, that's great, thank you. Is ugly a behavioral choice? I believe so. I think everyone's just reacting from the place that they really feel they have to be in. They don't see that they have other options always. <laughs> okay, my one woman show. I'll, <laughs> I'll get working on it. You got bullied today. You're 5'11 at 11 years old. You're gonna be a model, girl. Wait, I'm assuming you're a girl. You're gonna be a model. I mean, that's what I would do. I don't have your height. That's amazing. I'm sorry you got bullied today. I'm really sorry. And I, could give, I would give you a hug if I could. You have a question, Jacob. Am I acoustic? What? Uh, yes, you're a girl. Yeah. What? Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. Oh good, you like the meditation. Meditation. Yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed making that. I really meant that. Like when I made that, I actually was gonna like record something completely different, and then I was like, oh okay, this is happening and stuff. But making that and then like editing a little bit, I felt so much better. Like it changed me. 
just working on it. And I think that's always a good sign. You were trying to make me smile. You may, you succeeded. Same time next week. Yes. Goodbye, Nomu. Jacob, I don't know what you're doing, but please stop being weird. Uh, oh. Huh? It's Canadian highest viewed song on YouTube. Really? I love that song. Cause it'll never be yours. It's a running off the kind of. What is it? I kind of like to stay for us. We run a different kind of place. Let me be your ruler. You can call me Queen Bee, baby. I'll let me live that fantasy. Preppy stuff. You're sad. That's okay. Be sad. Be the saddest you can possibly be. Like, I want you to be like really dig in. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go. Someone called me Smarty Pants. That's a great, what's wrong with that? You must be really smart. I should make more TikTok videos. I haven't been because whatever, there's been things. Oh. Like I was sick, so I was like, I'm not going to do this. But yes, I should. Uh, I should. I should. I should. I should. I, should. La, 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 la. I will. Okay. Have, can I say, hey. Did I just burp? <laughs> hey. Wait. What? I need help. There's a rat? Really? Why are you coming to me? <laughs> Why am I the person? <laughs> what should you do? Um, you should get a cat. Make friends with it. Give it a name. Maybe you just got yourself a new pet. Oh, cool. Rat. Cats are good for that. Get a cat. But if your cat is like mine and is lazy, then <laughs> this is a, so like we have mice in our in in our house. And um, it kept going into like the drawers and leaving little mouse pellets, if you know what I mean. And uh, <laughs> and we have a cat and a dog, but they're like, mm. like they don't do, what? they're not doing their jobs. Um, <laughs> and so I took this little like stuffed cat animal that I think must belong to like my niece or nephew and I put it in the drawer. <laughs> to scare them off, you know, and it worked. Ow. So that's what I recommend. Oh, get a pet, nope, don't get a pet lion. I think you have two. Okay, my stomach is growling. I just told you what to do. Get a little <laughs> stuffed animal lion and uh, put it, put it by the, the mouse, the rat entrance. You must flee to Germany. You must. Okay. Okay. So many trolls today. I love you. I love you guys so much. I need to go eat. My stomach is growling. Be well. Be a light. You are a light. 
and I'll see you guys next week.